MJ, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I was just uh, sending out a tweet. Looks like we got about 35 people rejoining the new link and growing. Where are you at, Arvin? Where are you at, Arvin? I'm just trying to figure out. All right. Hey, MJ, can you kick it off for a second? I'm just trying to reconnect my uh, speakers here. Something's off. Okay. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, the late uh, the late start. Juggling between uh, Hawaii and uh, Spain and and uh, London. But anyway, I'm I'm really happy to see that uh, a longtime friend of mine, uh, Merwin Raphael, is on along with his uh, wife and business partner, Tracy. How are you doing, Erwin? I'm doing real well, Mike. Good to chat with you again. Good to be you back know, together. You know, it's it, it's good that we chat now because we probably won't be chatting in a couple of weeks when Ohio State does their annual uh, thrashing of my Wisconsin Badgers. But anyway, um, you wanna, do you want to get things uh, started and just tell us a little bit about uh, – what you're up to um, with Lantern Network and some of the things that uh, you got started at the uh, Super Bowl? Sure. Well, hey, thanks a bunch. First of all, I, I want to thank you and the whole team at VAST because you've been like incredible partners uh, with us uh, all the way. And, and uh, we'll work together as we continue uh, building this nonprofit. Uh, the Lantern Network started about a year and a half ago. We're 501c3 uh, registered in the state of California. Uh, we started the Lantern Network uh, with a vision, a very clear vision, one in which we believe that we can actually act locally to help make America more bold, strong, and united, a place where everybody has an opportunity to participate in growth and realize their, their full potential. This is a legacy project for myself and my life partner, my wife, uh, Tracy. Uh, we've both had incredible careers in corporate America, uh, from uh, accounting with the big, big six accounting. Uh, that's my wife and myself and automotive uh, launching the Genesis brand and working for other big uh, brands, the uh, Chrysler Group and uh, uh, Toyota. And we've just seen so much throughout our careers. I happen to currently be an executive at Amazon uh, and we've seen growth, but we've also seen a lot of amazing talent that hasn't been able to come to the surface and deliver and contribute fully and be rewarded and participate uh, like everybody else. The Lantern Network was really inspired by the Underground Railroad. Tracy and I went to see that movie and we were just inspired walking out of there and thought there's so many parallels between what was needed then and what we need today. Of course, back then, there were people escaping physical slavery and there were lots of people, black, white, every race, religion, gender, uh, helping them with safe houses, getting in spaces, hiding, putting their own lives at risk because they knew that the current situation, the status quo was wrong and that America would be better if everybody was free and able to participate. And yet here today, we don't have, thank God, at least not in this country, we don't have physical slavery, but there's still this bondage, this ac academic, uh, intellectual, and mostly economic bondage where it's so difficult for some people to, to, to cl crawl out of the situation that they're in. And when we look at the world, Tracy and I happen to be African-American, we see so many people who look like us, who struggle because they don't have the contacts, they don't have the know-how. And we meet plenty of people around this country who are black, who are white, who are Asian, who are Hispanic, who are Native American, who are gay, who are straight, who are every religion, who really want to help other people, right? They want to help everybody. And we've just felt like we had a unique opportunity here to leverage everything we've learned to help. First of all, we've got three pillars, right? We want to help inspire. So we want to be able to show the possibilities that are out there so that 
hey, there's a lot of opportunity and you have a lot of skills. You bring a lot to the table. We want to help you uh, harness those skills and, 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 and monetize it. And then there's so many people who want to help. Every day I run into people who say, hey, I want to help folks. You know, I want to do my part. And they don't quite know how, right? And they don't have the contacts and the connections, but they're really deeply inspired to do so. So our second pillar uh, is guidance, where we pair mentors and mentees together, and it's mutually beneficial. But most of all, society benefits. And then our third pillar is, is, is propulsion, where we help place them. And we've got some great corporate partners we're working with right now who have signed up with us and said, hey, we need this help because we want to diversify our workplace as well. And we don't quite know how to do so. So we're filling a, a, a real need. We kicked this project off at the Lee Steinberg Super Bowl party. So those of you who were there last year, you remember us. We were the primary beneficiaries of the Lee Steinberg's uh, amazing uh, annual uh, Super Bowl party. Uh, and uh, part of what we were able to do with that is work with the team from VAST in uh, helping develop a, an NFT that will be the beneficiary uh, of that's going to be dropping on September 8th. Uh, and so we're real excited. There are three versions of it. There's a copper, there's a, 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 a gold uh, and a diamond. Uh, and we are just excited to be here talking about that today. Uh, I do know that my friend Jimmy is on as well. He's got a, an amazing project that uh, maybe he'll be able to share with us a little bit about. But that's what we're here to talk about today, the Lantern Network, introduce you to who we are, uh, what we're doing. We're working with uh, universities. We, we're just launching, as a matter of fact, this week, uh, we, we, we just put the finishing touches on an entrepreneurship uh, model that we'll be launching later this year because not everyone wants a traditional career. And if you don't want a traditional career, guess what? There's still opportunity for you. So we're excited about this. This is what I plan on doing for the rest of my life as I transition from, you know, the, the normal, uh, my corporate uh, uh, lifestyle uh, into doing my passion and my legacy project for our family and for generations to come. Any questions that I might be able to, to answer for anyone? Uh, yeah, I got a few questions, actually. Sure, please go ahead. Who is that? Just state your name and, 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 and go ahead with your questions. How, like, my name is Kionda Henry, and I'm um, trying to, like, you know, get into NFTs and stuff like that. I wasn't really here, like, throughout the whole thing. I was only here for, like, the last, like, 20 minutes. But, like, for an NFT, how does it work exactly for anyone? So, so we're yeah, we're 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 we're, we're going to discuss this at the tail end. So, if you just hang in there for about ten minutes, maybe fifteen, MJ, you can tell me uh, how much time I have there. Uh, we'll get into the mechanics uh, of, of of the of this particular NFT. All right, thank you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thank hey, you. Thanks, Kianda. I was just seeing if uh, Arvin was able to uh, reconnect. I see Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Mike. I, yeah, my mic is back on, and I was able to restart the whole thing. So. Welcome to Twitterverse. Hey, Jimmy, great to have you up here. Thank you, Urban, for the intro and the overview. Um, Jimmy, it's been a while, and um, I'm just excited to have you on the panel and uh, do this with you. So would love for you to kind of give an intro on yourself and what you've been up to and um, what, what you think of what we're doing right now, because I think this is exactly what we always talked about, and I'm just happy that this is happening organically. Man, it's um, exciting times, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, Arvin, for having me. And good to hear from you, Irwin, MJ. Um, this is Jimmy Smith, and I'm the chairman, CEO, and uh, um, CEO of Amusement Park Entertainment, which is a quasi-advertising entertainment tech firm. And we always try and be on the cut cutting edge of whatever is happening and what's going on. And obviously when um, um, Jerkovac, Mike Jerkovac introduced me, and hey, Ari, I know you're on here too, introduced me to Arbin and saw the, the crazy things that you were doing. It's like, you know, it's like some 23rd century stuff we want to get down because we like to be on that cutting edge. 
And then with what Irwin's doing over there with the Lantern Network and the the times that we're in, it's so, you know, so timely, the Lantern Network that, um, you know, that's just want to be involved with that. And I met um, Irwin at the um, MJ introduced me to him at the um, Super Bowl party, pre Super Bowl. You know, contribute. I can't. Yeah. So I think, Jimmy, like what, what, what kind of the premise is here and how kind of things kind of align because we, we never know how it happens, but it seems to happen. Um, and uh, it is this whole NFT with purpose, right? And when we talk about Lan Lantern in regards of their project, it's really about the emphasis on that and how to utilize NFTs to really connect uh, purpose in a complete new way and empower actually uh, a mission um, so that people are aware of it and that we also give it all the attention that it needs. Um, so do you want to give me like a kind of feedback on what talked to you when you heard about the Lantern project and what why you think it, it is worth uh, paying attention to? Yeah, absolutely. When I first met you, that's all you were about. You were saying that these NFTs that are going up, they have no purpose. It's just some silly, stupid whatever, and it doesn't mean anything. And anything that's going to retain value needs purpose. It needs to, there needs to be an artfulness to it. There needs to be a do good cause to it. And that's exactly what the Lantern Network's um, NFT with purpose is, is all about. The Lantern Network, and I'm sure um, Erwin already went through it, but it just hits my heart the way, um, you know, African Americans and were treated in this country and how we're fighting to get our foot our our foot in corporate America, our foot in this these types of businesses or industries and whatever and whatnot. And because we don't have the legacy of I'll give you an example in advertising, many of my colleagues, their parents worked in advertising or started advertising agencies. And they go back generations. And so they got a leg up on the business, how the business works, how the industry works what to do and they they have all of the the cheat sheet right in front of them. many african americans their parents have didn't go to college um weren't allowed to go to college or if they went to college like my mom she had to be a teacher my dad had a master's degree and could only when he moved to michigan could only work in a in a factory nothing wrong with a factory but he had a white collar degree that he was trying to do his thing, eventually owned the Arby's, but I learned from him. And so what Irwin is doing with, um, with the Lantern Network, providing the knowledge and the infrastructure and the information on how to get ahead and provide for your family. And so with these NFTs for purpose, to, that is one of the purposes, is to support programs like the Lantern Network, and it's such an ingenious way of leaving. Thank you. Jimmy, did you get just rugged on your uh, audio? I, don't know. I, think, I think he might have um, lagged out, I think. Just for a second, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he'll come, he'll come, he'll come back up, but Irwin, you know, it's like basically... You, you pulled that thing together. And I don't know if everybody knows who Lee Steinberg is, but I think for me, I knew who Lee Steinberg was because he the movie Jerry Maguire, which is one of my favorite movies, was based on Lee Steinberg. Right. So he's one of the top he's one of the top agents ever to do it. And every year for the I think it's the last 34 years, he's thrown a, a night before the Super Bowl event where he's he's basically um, nominated and uh brought to the spotlight to a charity. And this year, the cause was the Lantern Network. Um, it was about 1,500 athletes, agents, influencers. And Irwin was able to, along with Tracy and the rest of the team, get the message out about what this charity and what this cause was going to do and what it meant. And yeah, Jimmy, every, everybody heard a word that you said. So, so anyway... Um, what we did from from that is we created a, a 
um, Arvin and the dev team created a, a tiered series of NFTs. So, um, Kianda, the basically there's three levels. If you if you attended the event, um, and uh, there's going to be a very special video that comes out on uh, September 8th. If you retweet, you know, or post the uh, video, you're going to be gifted one of the uh, copper level um, NFTs. And then there's going to be a silver silver level, and then there's going to be a gold level. And basically, when you get the full collection, it's going to open up additional, you, you know, additional utility. So what is the additional utility? That'll be revealed on September 8th. But what this, what this spoke to me about, as Arvin was asking what it meant to Jimmy, um, I know and I studied the Underground Railroad. Um, my father is a history teacher. Um, we didn't get everything in school about what went on. And basically, if if uh um erwin if you could speak a little bit to the story of it the narrative of what the underground um, railroad was and why you called this the lantern network and how you see that um moving forward in you know 2022 and 2023 i think that would be great for all the people that are on absolutely thanks yeah uh and it's 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 a great conversation it's one that literally gives me goosebumps every time i talk about it you know you go back, a dark place in our history, uh, people are slaves in the South, trying to escape to freedom, wherever. And there was a network of people everywhere, right, who were trying to help folks escape. There really wasn't an organization called the Underground Railroad. That was kind of a name assigned to it because there were folks who, first of all, were courageous, right? They wanted to experience freedom. And they may or may not have heard stories about the possibility of being free. Uh, and they took risks. They risked their lives because they knew how dangerous it would be to try to escape. And there were others such as Harriet Tubman, right, who helped them and made many, many uh, 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 trips uh, back uh, into the, 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 the southern sl the slave states and took them across uh, through the, the valleys, through rivers over mountains, uh, dodging dogs and bullets and whatnot. And there were friends of, of, of these, these folks who had set up their homes and their stores and their businesses and their basements and what have you called safe houses where these folks can go to get dry. They knew they had safe, they could be safe. They maybe would pre, uh, uh, fulfill their, their, their needs in terms of food and water and whatnot so they can get going. And, one, uh, you know, you couldn't just say, hey, if you're escaping slavery, come here, because for those folks, that was punishable by death as well. So they use a lot of symbolism. They use quilts. They use different symbols to indicate where these people escaping slavery should go to find safety. One of the most famous uh, was a lantern that if you operated a safe house, and people were going to be coming through on Tuesday night, well, how would they know if there were slave catchers there or not? You had to give them a signal, and the signal was a lantern, a lit lantern, by the front door at night, because everybody else's lantern would be out. You would go put your lantern out there, and now just picture yourself coming around a corner. You've got no shoes. Your toes are busted. You're sweaty. Your clothes are torn. And you know that around the next curb, there's either safety and a place where you can get dry and get replenished or potentially death, right? So when you look around that last corner, you're just hoping to hell that you see a lantern lit because that meant all of the world to you. And for us today, we feel like it's that very same symbol of people who are struggling, who are trying to get out, who are looking for help, and they just need to have a place where they can... Uh, get uh, rest, recharge, advice, guidance, and support a hand into uh, the rest of their career, whatever that might be. And we call it Lantern Network because it's like a network, all of us working together of lanterns uh, providing uh, safety and shelter for all of those folks. And I have to say, we just couldn't do Sorry, Irvin, I think it, your audio dropped off for a second. So hopefully it will reconnect. MJ, you experience the same thing? 
Yeah, it seems like right when we um, right when we get into advertising uh, the uh, place that Twitter the Twitter the, the the Twitter's working against us tonight, but we're gonna he, he, break he's through. back. He's back. He's back. So okay, cool. uh, just Ervin, just to give you, it gives me goosebumps to understand that you know the the storyline on Lantern because it is very representative of what we've been doing with the Moon Bats and what we're doing with Vast and the NFTs of purpose, which is really on chain support, so it cannot be questioned. So it sends as a signal of actually what our actions are because you cannot revert them so that people can actually trust in those actions and therefore trust in the support that is being given to them. And I think that's really what spoke to me around when Mike brought this to me and I'm like, whoa, A, I didn't know the story. B, I was like, wow, it's just mind boggling. And, and it shows how humans are kind and compassionate and generous and that there is that DNA in us. It just needs to be awoken and be lit. And, Absolutely. Um, so I'm very just excited that you and Jimmy and Mike and and the vast ecosystem and the moon bats as we hang in here, uh, we get to be part of this origin story of how this actually is going to drop. So you know that what just love it. What's what's really deep about it too is just like back in the day, whites were involved, Jewish folks were involved, Quakers were involved. So it was a multicultural underground movement, this underground railroad. You had to just imagine, Erwin said, you know, when they would come around the corner. Well, really, there was no corner like that back in the day. <laughs> it wasn't like we're in New York City and we're coming around the corner. We're out in the woods and you got bears, you got snakes, you got um, bobcats and uh, mountain lions and whatever, whatever to deal with is not even just the slave catchers. So you had to trust. So when Arvin, when you said you can trust the, this blockchain by the same token, you had to trust that lantern was, you know, was no, you, 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 you got it, Jimmy. Sorry. You got wrecked again. It's just Twitter seems <laughs> to have a, uh... Twitter or, or, or some energy doesn't want us to talk about this because this is kind of the evolutionary step of support and energy and purpose. And as and, we know, and was the, it, the dark energy wants to keep us down and not it, it show it, our full light. It, it's so true. It's so true, Arvin. Every time you touch on something like this, and it gave me goosebumps when I'm looking at all of the uh, all of the icons here, and you're seeing bats, and you're seeing owls, and you're seeing apes, and you're seeing all of the things that uh, Jimmy was just talking about, they literally had to travel from the South States with what they had, like the shoes, the clothes. There was no, there, there was no tent. There was no, um, you know, there was no hair dryer. There was no water. Everything that had to happen was them putting complete faith in the fact that uh, there could be at the uh, light at the end of the, uh, at the end of the tunnel, at the end of the railroad, right? And if you go back into history, I mean, if that isn't one of the best networks that was ever put together by people of all races, creeds, and religions, like Jimmy was saying, I don't know what is, right? And what Erwin, he'll go into next is, okay, how do you apply that to today? And when I was fortunate enough to hear that uh, they were gonna do, um, they were gonna do, uh, allow me to set up a studio at the night before the Super Bowl party with Lee Steinberg, with all the athletes and all the agents and all of the doctors and all of the nurses and all of the teachers and all of the firemen and all of the police officers and all of the bankers and all of the CEOs of companies like Red Bull. And I just asked them one really simple question, which when we get into having other speakers come up, it was, who was your mentor? And what did they teach you, good or bad? So... Irvin, you're back on. You want to speak just a little bit? Um, you want to speak just a little bit to that, to the the mission and what a mentor means to you and Tracy and what you're looking at doing with the funds that are you know raised to support this amazing um, NFT with purpose cause. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I got cut off there earlier. Uh, I want to make sure I give a shout out uh, again, uh, Mike. You and the team at Vast, amazing. Uh, the connected uh, uh, t TV group. In Notion, our advertising agency of record, Re Re Revolution is doing our PR. But I mean, this, this is really big. And Lee wanted this. Lee said to me, this is something that 
we want to do this is something we need to do uh, as an organization. So for us, pulling this together and getting the support for not only thousands, but tens of thousands of young people with the need is absolutely amazing. So what we're going to do and what we're doing right now is continuing to fund uh, program development because we are training these young folks in basic life skills, right? Things that they can use anywhere, whether it's presentation making, putting business plans together, uh, uh, corporate culture, uh, uh, all the things that they need to do to prepare themselves. Uh, but we're also helping uh, them with mentors. So we, we're using this money to vet. We're going to vet mentors, right? These are young people. We want to make sure that that the people we, we pair them with are, are credible and aren't, aren't, aren't weirdos. We're going to hurt them, right? We're looking for people to help because we want our young folks to be able to fully trust the Lantern Network. This is the network that gets them from where they are to where they can truly deliver their purpose uh, uh, for us. So that's what we're doing here. We've got literacy, financial literacy. We've got a partner developing financial literacy uh, backgrounds, doing management, job placement assistance. Uh, we've got partnership with some great companies here who are coming to us already saying, hey, Urban, we need these kids. And we just recently just placed two, three uh, kids with really big companies, uh, people like Deloitte, Accenture, GE, uh, uh, Stop and Shop, Kendrill, uh, working with Amazon. So th th these companies are coming to us and we are at the point right now of developing uh, an entrepreneurship program because a lot of these folks will have ability to go into business directly for themselves and take all of that value and then they can do uh, business to business work supplying uh, these other businesses. So we're just uh, thrilled uh, about this. We're also uh, working with uh, Giving Block, right, as a, a, a main uh, a fundraising. But for us, this is amazing to be able to partner with VAST uh, and uh, 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 Middles Investment Group, which will be dropping the, the NFT. And we're the beneficiary 100%. And guess what? Irvin Raphael makes zero money. I don't take a salary at all. I don't get a dime. I don't charge any expenses to this. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. I want my great grandkids talking about this. Tracy doesn't get a dime. We're doing this because this is the way we're going to change America. And we really want you to come along with us on this journey. Thank you, Irving. No, the change always comes from within. It doesn't come from the outside. And sometimes we get caught up in sitting on the outside and looking in and hoping we were part of it or something would change. But something that basically uh, definitely blockchain has taught me in the NFT space is that we are the change collectively and these are the kind of collaborations that you know if you, if you think about it that most people in here don't know each other not in person only in a digital form and here we stand for something that's much larger than us that's going to impact people young people young minds and their life journey and that that is that is moving and that's worth everything it's not about the paycheck it's not about the floor price it's about what impact we can have um, and that in itself, like that's payback in a, such a much larger scale than, than anything else. So I'm just excited that we get to be part of this mission. So thank you again for, for joining our forces. Thank you. That's why we say we need to be the change we want to see. Hey, Jimmy, can you speak a little bit about uh, your, your uh, um, God Squad Athletics products? and some of the other things that you have going on? Because, I mean, for me, I couldn't say that Vast would be where it is without, without you sort of supporting and bringing, you know, your brands, your ideas, your clients into this. And I know I knew it was going to be magic when you and Ir Irvin met, you know, in uh, Los Angeles. And so, you know, um, no, basically. On absolutely. 100. Um, God Squad Athletics is... Uh Oops, looks like we lost Jimmy again. Man, we, we got to make sure that Jimmy has a strong connection. We'll send him some Space Link uh, <laughs> uh, gear so that we, we, we're not having this up, <laughs> uh, uplink. There's, the, this is, this is uh, we got to ensure that. But yeah, Jimmy, try to uh, find a better connection because I think it has something to do with the connection. Um, it seems to drop in and out. Hey, 12012, um, thanks for having you up here as well. Just wanted to kind of get your take on what's happening and the movement that you feel with the Moonbats and the NFT and Bass and how that kind of 
you know, makes you feel about being a community member and now seeing kind of the purpose unfold. So I know that it's been kind of a journey where you just trust in, in the relationship and moon bats basically have just been hanging together, but you kind of are seeing it unfold in basically live without really a roadmap, but almost just as an energy that moves in the, at the right pace. So what's your take on this? Um, hey, Arvin, how's it going? MJ. Hey, thanks for having me up here, guys. Um, yeah, so uh, my, I'm 12012. Uh, I'm the space community space host for the Moonbats, and uh, I really do get to see it day by day how it unfolds because at the end of every day, we come together in the Bat Cave and we share a space, and uh, it, it's almost like being at a campfire with uh, the guys and all the OGs in the community. So, um, yeah, it's it's really touching. You know, it, it gets really personal. We we do go through a lot day by day in the Web3 space because uh, not all of the Web3 space is as nice as our corner or our back cave. And um, the, the stuff that is going on with this... Um, the lantern network is uh it's for me it's it's like uh how you take something dark wow what are the odds every time we're talking about the emotional impact a latin like the light has on we're just on losing members like crazy. Being rugged. that's nuts I love where he was going. Too. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, you want, you know uh, continue? Sorry, twelve o twelve. Like this is what we're talking about. The dark energy is trying to make sure that the light doesn't shine. That's how I look at this. Yeah, there, there you go. It, you know, they, they're in the tech too. <laughs> the adversaries in the tech. So I don't know where I f uh, I fell off, but. Um, basically we have a clothing line that honors the Lord. And if you're going to put somebody's name on the back, it should be, it should be him. If you're going to put all your hopes and dreams into someone, it should be him. And that's the, that's the message of God squad athletics. And you know, it's the tagline is what team are you on? No, I, I, I love, I love, uh, I remember when you presented that to me and I just loved the idea of like, what team are you on? And is it, you know, it, is it the right team and what do you stand for? Um, and I think to me that just speaks so much louder because it's just kind of takes you out of that uh, state of mind that we as humans are kind of being trained to be right now, which is like, oh, what is in it for me? Right. And sort of understanding like, hey, what is the collective? What is what is the community aspect to this? How big of an impact? How strong are we together? Right, all of those elements, like you know, are being kind of pushed away because we don't feel safe in any community or any engagement because we feel like there's always a different agenda. Right, so I think that um, making it really about the spiritual fabric of actually coming together with just a purpose um, kind of takes out of all these um, judgments and political dynamics that are ripping us apart as a society. And, and that's really like really where the common ground is, where we can actually find fertile ground that we can build up on. Twitter has been absolutely yes. horrible. I, even just staying up here, I get disconnected multiply. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Jimmy. No, I was just saying that that is the key. If you if you understand what the adversary is up up to, it's all about division. And why we keep falling for, it's those people. It's that person. It's this one. It, it's those people on the other side of the border. It's the Democrats. It's the Republicans. It's the independents. Just anything um, that that causes division, we seem ripe for. You know, we jump right in there. Yeah, it's those guys. And um, you keep falling for the knuckleheads. And they don't care what side it is just so long as they can do their dirt got to be smarter than that well yeah they they feed off exactly that division that division is what feeds them right and feeds their power right and takes away our power and that's what dims our light and when we talk into the you know the light in itself being a symbol that's basically what this is about is like giving people hope being kind being generous and not judging them from the first step forward and saying, hey, I don't know where your journey is, but here, I'm going to lend you a hand because 
at the end of the day, we're all in this journey together. Eight billion of us. Hey, Amen. That's why, you know, we got to talk. I'm not doing it now because this is Urban's uh, Urban's deal. But um, we got to talk about the truth because that's what the truth, the graphic novel that I wrote. That that's what this is all. It's all about the the division that's taking place. All right, enough of that. I just uh, I just saw one of the uh, producers of the uh, video that we shot um, at the Super Bowl. I don't know if he'll raise his hand and come on or not. But uh, Venus, appreciate you. You're one of the mentors. I mean, Venus. he's younger than me. He's younger than me, but I've learned a lot about a lot from you know from Venus. So anyway, Venus, raise your hand if you want to come up on the. Uh, on the uh, panel, I don't know, Arben. Is there anybody else? And the 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 you Lantern Network up? is a huge fan of Venus. Awesome. Uh, one thing I I didn't talk about. We're planning on doing uh, entrepreneurship um, uh, uh, sessions at ten different cities across the country. So imagine up to a hundred people. For one week at a time, eight hours a day, we'll come in with their ideas, put business plans together, marketing plans, get the whole thing going so we can create some businesses for them and help them partner with other businesses. Uh, these are people who wouldn't be able to do it without the help uh, of others. And for them, the lantern is going to be that light that helps them uh, get ignited, get their business going. We are so excited about this and we need your help uh, to tweet, get the message out, get the word out. Uh, lanternnetwork.org, uh, uh, get folks plugged in because we're going to want to uh, have partners to come in with us to help deliver content uh, to, to, to these folks. Not all of them are young. Some of them are young at heart, right, uh, for the uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, models. But most of them will be young folks that we will benefit uh, from getting them engaged for many years to come. We're so excited. Thank you. Yo, so, Irvin, once they once they blow up, because they will, the program you got is just off the skillet. When they blow up, just as important, remind them to um, reach back. Because oftentimes we, we become successful and we don't turn around and look back and remember those people who were in the position that we were before we became successful. So that's super important. Yeah, Jimmy, you're so right. And that's actually part of, of the model. It's closed loop. So they'll come in, they'll put their business plan, we'll help them get funding, we'll help them go. And then we'll help them network with each other because we lack in that area, right? Partnering with each other. And part of the deal is they're going to have to come back and help mentor and groom others. And that's how you get this big wheel turning that's going to propel uh, people uh, into economic freedom for generations to come. But you're exactly right. I think we lost Jimmy for a second. He is back. I'm back. But I think what I'd like to also emphasize is um, this idea. There's two parts to this, right? How do NFTs play into this? Because, again, that's the title of, of the space, NFTs and purpose. And the thing that I think um, the reason why you're seeing all these upside down uh, PFPs is because the Moonbag community basically exactly is embracing what NFTs have to do with purpose, that you embrace the NFT as a signal similar to a light that gives you a, a validation that you're part of a network of support of a community that then actually embraces its power and says, okay, what can we do with this? We are the utility. We are by actually just coming together for a purpose. And that's exactly what the NFT um, concept is about. When, when uh, the question came up initially, it was like, okay, how do NFTs relate to, to this space? It's really a validated form on chain that you stand for something. A lot of people will say, like Amber, for example, and I don't want to bring up a sore subject, but she said, oh, well, I donated a couple million dollars towards, you know, nonprofits. But then later on, we found out she didn't, right? It's exactly that. It's like NFTs basically cannot be faked because once they're in that smart contract, they're on chain, that web of support, the transactions, the way you list them, that when you actually cash out, when you cash in, all those dynamics are actually on chain. There is no denying those actions. And that's really why NFTs are important because the, the, having that transparency allows you to have comfort in your community and the network that you have that's establishing that. Now, the value of those NFTs 
is really being set by speculators because the value of that NFT that I have certain moon bats in this community or hapes or other NFT communities that basically will never let go of a certain PFP or NFT. And that's why it rises up in price because sometimes those NFTs go for $5 million. Why? Because the money is not going to change that person's life. The, the, the NFT means much more than the money you will give to me. And when the moment you have that dynamic, the value of those NFTs skyrockets. And as I mentioned to Jim, uh, I think last year when we talked about like the digital church, that's really what we have here. And sometimes one of us needs to buy a car or we have a child, we need to buy diapers and it's okay to cash out because I hope that in this journey, in the parallel journey, you will be able to cash back in and join our train or join our mission when you're ready and having this ability to give you that gift of the value transfer so that you can actually use that to pay off your student loans or take care of your family or take care of your health. Like that's true power of community. That is real support. This is not about us embracing speculator gambling dynamics of NFT and the economics of it. This is about us embracing the community. And the moment you make that mind shift, that's when true power actually is enabled. Oh, we got a silent church. Sorry, I forgot the music. <laughs> <laughs> Urban, so, do you want to go over uh, the the mechanics of 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 these NFTs again, please? Sure. Um, on September eighth, you're gonna go. You're gonna go to the Lantern Network on uh, Vast, which is uh, www.vast.app. Uh, and there's going to be uh, three tiers of uh, NFT support. So there's a copper level, there's a silver level, and there's a gold level. And those three levels equate to the milestones and the mission, the three missions that um, Urban started the uh, conversation with, right? So the first community that we're going to try to bring in and bring together are all the people who attended the uh, Lee Steinberg event that that sort of launched Lantern Network at the uh, Super Bowl. And why are we doing September 8th? Because um, the last time we saw 1,500 people was uh, the night before the Super Bowl. September 8th is the uh, start of the next uh, NFL, NFL season. So you're going to be getting emails if you were at the event or you were invited to the event. The email is going to ask you to do something, just like all of the contests that are happening on uh, Twitter right now. And the ask is going to be to share a video and you're going to be rewarded with uh, a gifted uh, Copper Lantern Network NFT and information and inside access to the newsletter about how else you can help and what programs that uh, Tracy and uh, Urban and the rest of the team are doing. There's going to be a second tier, which will be silver. That's going to be specifically tied to uh, fundraising. So it's a little bit like a GoFundMe, but the cause is um, uh, putting money into the uh, programs that uh, Lantern Network is going to execute in the, in the 10 cities. And then there's going to be a gold level, and we're going to save that introduction of what the gold level is going to entail until September 8th. But there's also going to be a musical performance on September 8th. Um, we've got two artists that are going to perform on September 8th. So I think for me, what this was, Irvin, was to start getting people to understand that there is a network called the Lantern Network, you know, to bring all of these bats and, you know, <laughs> the clown and the owls. Like, Ar Arben, I don't know if I've seen a better piece of artwork than the owl that you put up on the uh, Twitter today. So I was quick to, uh, you know, retweet, add the uh, three friends' names and uh, put myself in in for that uh, contest because that all is just beautiful, you know? So you've got all these different communities and what the goal is, Irvin, is to, you know, you, you've now put yourself within this group and, uh, you know, the utility and the reward for participating and supporting and watching the video and sharing the video if it moves you and bringing things in. And there's going to be questions which... You know, I have one for Arben because I've never asked him this one as a as a director. Um, who was your mentor, or who was a couple of your mentors, Arben, growing up? Um, good question. 
I think one of my first mentors was uh, my grandma. She was the one that kind of raised me for the first five years. And um, she gave me all the values of kindness and compassion and being there for me when my parents were not really around. And so her strength as a woman in a man's world um, spoke louder than anything else. And that kind of was the big, big impact in my life and still is. My pop and my mom, that, that was, um, um, you know, that was, they were the king and queens. And still to this day, my dad owns, a, well, owned an Arby's. He was the first one to own the Arby's in um, Muskegon, Michigan. And that Arby's is still there. He doesn't own it anymore. He's passed away, but it's still there. And I had somebody write, hey, that Arby's is still there. And it's the only one in town. So we had the meats back in the day. <laughs> and the ketchup, right? Is that where you and, and the ketchup. ketchup? And the ketchup. Irvin Irvin, how about how about you and Tracy? Who were the mentors that uh, sort of and, and what did they teach you? Yeah, you know, I couldn't be anywhere uh, without the, my mentors. There's, there's so many of them. The one I'll talk about right now, his name is Francis Price. He's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I met him when I worked uh, in uh, my early years in the automotive industry. I was 23 years old, and uh, he was in the plant manager's office, and I asked the secretary who he was, and she said, oh, you don't know. I said, no. She said, he owns XYZ Company. That was one of our biggest suppliers, and I thought, he owns it, and he's an African-American guy, and I'm thinking, that's like crazy. He owns the company. Fortunately, I had the, the, the guts to walk right in uh, uh, when I saw him alone and introduced myself. He put his arms around me and he said, man, I like what I see. I'm going to mentor you. He's mentored me for over 30 years. And even today, as we launched the Lantern Network, he's on our board of directors because he he taught me about building intergenerational wealth, but also about supporting for generations to come. In fact, one of the people, one of the things he insisted that I do, Jimmy, to your point, was to reach back and mentor others, uh, which I did. I put, picked out this young man who, after many years, has grown, and he's now vice president at General Electric, and he's also on our board. So we actually have three great of mentors on our board. So this has been what we're about, and I'm just so excited. I just used those two examples to show that uh, one, it can be long term, and two, you got to turn around and mentor others uh, so that you can share what's been given to you, Tracy. So Hi. now, yeah, yes. Tracy. Hey, everybody. My name is Tracy Raphael. Just wanted to let you know that my uh, first mentor was a nonprofit, similar to the Lantern Network. I grew up in inner city Columbus, Ohio. My parents were laborers. They could not help me when it came to careers and and the different options and getting prepared for them. I was able to get linked up with this nonprofit and that's how I secured, I was trained and developed and that's how I secured my first job with Tin Young right out of college. So we are, It's this, this is in my DNA, it's in my blood and I am so excited to help all of the young people that we have it within the Lantern Network and we're bringing in new mentees every day. Yeah, so watch this. Let's go all the way to Kosovo. Hey, Gon, I see you. Who was your, who was your mentor and what did you learn from them? Hi, everyone. This is Hagan. Uh, fortunately, today with me, it's uh, my main mentor, Arbem. I don't know if you guys can hear me. And as well as uh, Farhad is here and Esad. But since uh, like 12 years ago, I met with our band and he's like a brother to me, but uh, he did teach me the most important thing, which is never give up and remove your ego. You will grow and remove your fears and you will fly. So I think we're flying together and working together. And it's been like a phenomenal experience and it's like a family today. And in the same time as Farad in the last six years, we've been working together and I'm very grateful for you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, Keande, I don't know if we answered your question or not earlier, but I have a question for you. Who's, who's your mentor? I don't know if he heard you, Mike, or um, he knows that you were talking to him. 
Hey, hey, Keande, it's uh, it's it's Mike. Are you there? If you're there, um, pop in. Oh uh, yeah, for you. I'm here. Yeah. What? I'm not sure if we answered. I'm not sure if we answered your your question earlier. So I wanted to make sure. And then also, I had a question for you. Who who's who's one of your mentors? Uh, who's I don't one of the mentor. people that you learned from. Um, actually, I've learned from, I learned a lot from, um, Aaron when he was speaking a little bit on it. I was in, like, I was trying to listen, like, you know, trying to get, like, the whole aspect of it, but I think I understand where he was coming from. Very cool. Very cool. So anybody else want to, anybody else want to come up, have any, um, questions yeah, for, I, uh, any of the speakers? Maybe we can make Farad to speak. He is with a the dog there. Arben, can you make him... Uh, speaker? Yeah, I, I requested him to come to the stage, but I don't know if he's ready. Farad, speak. You have to request speaker. Uh, while we're waiting for Farad, 1202, who's your mentor? Yeah, so I mean, uh, for me, um, my parents for sure. Uh, I I don't look up to anyone else in the world. I don't. I don't have like role models that I idolize or anything. Anyone like, you know. I, I mean, I appreciate all the things that people have done for the world and whatnot. But my parents for sure, um, just solid people, and really, you know, they taught me how to be myself uh, properly to others, and you know, they you can't you can't fake genuine genuine people or you know authenticity. All right, all right, all right. So we're at, at about that hour, Arben. I know we lost a little bit of time. Probably, yes. uh, we probably lost seven minutes from uh, Twitter, you know, Twitter economics. But do um, you have anything else you want to um, talk about? Or should we wrap things up and uh, look forward to seeing everybody next week? Yeah, I'm looking forward to next week and some other exciting stuff. MJ, maybe you can allude. I know that you're hanging out with who are you hanging out? In Ibiza right now. <laughs> oh wow! So we came here to uh, close a couple of uh, deals, three three deals. Everybody was like, "Oh, you're in Ibiza." So um, we're working with a DJ that uh, we actually had play a first song on the space that Arben did on uh, Monday night with uh, with the goats. Um, we're actually just signed a deal with uh, one of the uh, most exclusive and original art collections in the world, which we're going to be announcing things on that in, uh, in mid September. And, uh, right now, um, I'm walking over to an event with a DJ named Solomon. And I'll play a little bit of music as, uh, as we go out when we end the thing, a song or something, but, um, I'm super appreciative. Like for me, having, having this network and this support group is really, really critical. I mean, it's been tough for everyone. It's been really tough for like the last three years for me personally as a as a director um that hasn't been working a lot just because COVID didn't allow directors that were doing big jobs even if they were for charity and causes to to work so when i was able to go to uh to uh um los angeles like i literally went to los angeles i knew that the uh prices on hotels were going to be beyond my range you know i stayed at a hotel that's normally $75. It was uh, $250 for that night before the Super Bowl. And I went because I knew how important it was to Irvin to uh, capture the stories. So if you if you caught a little smile or if you have a mentor and you weren't brought up on stage and you want to add that to the Twitter thread, that would be really great. Um, but I think everyone and a lot of it is parents, right, who you're learning from, you know, good and bad. So for me on this project, it's so much more important than anything else that is going on. And Jimmy, I don't know if you want to, if you want to share after this, uh, the portrait that I took, but I took a phenomenal portrait of a long-term friend, Jimmy um, Smith, the day before the Super Bowl. It's one of my favorite portraits. I'm going to put it up at some point, you know, to put it up. the cause that Jimmy, wanted to, that Jimmy wants to do. But you want to talk a little bit about that day for you? 
Oh man, <laughs> it's it, what Mike's talking about. Is I I I have this helmet. So shout out to microclimate, microclimate.com. So I'm one of the few last of the last of the folks who hasn't caught COVID. And because when I go out in public, I wear this helmet. It's like a space helmet. But I got Nova Novavax shot. I got the Novavax shot. So. I got to get my second one next week, and I'll be good to go. So I may not wear the helmet as much except for on the plane. But anyway, and I, I use it as when I'm when I'm speaking and I have to they ask for a picture. I always send them, send them that one. Yeah, so, so Jimmy wasn't going to come. He sent the rest of his team, and I was like, look, you can come in the helmet. Nobody's going to judge you. We're just going to love that you come. And it's really important that you meet Irvin – and the rest of his team. So I'm going to post after this um, the uh, the portrait of Jimmy, and I'm going to mint that thing on on Vast, and I'm going to work with Arvin to figure out anybody that wants it. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, photograph of one of my friends that I'm going to cherish forever. And so you know, I flew from London to do um, 16 hours of interviews. We shot over 110 people that were talking about their mentors, what the Lantern Network would mean to them. Some of the people that gave the best performances were actually the, the, the sons and daughters or the husband, if I was interviewing the wife, right? And this, this film is one of my favorite films that I've ever done. It's going to be released on September 8th um, as part of the Lantern Network. It's people talking about what they had to go through to get to where they are. And, you know... Like literally, I think when you watch the film and you see people who are an accountant, but they're changing their community um, by what they're doing, it's what makes this all worthwhile for me. So when Arvin was saying he wanted to do a series of Twitter spaces called NFTs with Purpose, this is the third one, right? We, we, we started off with By My Cancer, which, you know, I was with uh, three people today that are going to help with uh, the next hospital the next artist and that was one of the conversations that we had today but that was able to in you know three weeks raise four hundred thousand dollars plus through nfts and uh, gofundme donations to the family and you know the patient got the money directly his family got the money directly and he's now he's now in treatment you know and last week we talked about you know an amazing subject tonight we talked about an amazing subject i know arvin's not going to stop um, it's, we're all about making things that make a difference. So thank everyone for joining and I'm going to let Arvin, uh, play us out and then I'm going to walk over and I'll blast some music. Okay. Awesome. You think, thank you. No, and Jimmy and, and Irvin, great to have you. Um, I really look forward to how this is going to unfold. I'm really excited about how we are able to use our support system, our knowledge, our abilities, and amplify what we can do together. Um, and I just love, like, one thing I've learned by being an entrepreneur, you cannot control timing. Um, timing emerges when everything's just right. Um, so all these relationships, everything kind of aligns itself. And then right when it's supposed to happen, when you're almost like, oh, this was not going to happen, it just kind of shows up. And that's what I love about life. It's, it's just always surprises me and... It's been, it's just, I feel humbled um, to be able to do this. And it's, it's, it's a privilege in, in the biggest way possible. So, MJ, I know you're walking over. You'll do a little surprise. I can't wait for next week's spaces, uh, mainly because I know that we're going to kind of open up the kimono even further with some more music artists and, and other bigger projects. And I love the fact that we can actually initiate and activate our network on chain with all that we're doing through the NFTs so that I can continue doing what I'm doing, which is airdrop value to the community. So the community feels embraced, seen, loved. And I know that that is going to basically give them, pay, be paid forward by the community members. I'm seeing it. And that's the most beautiful thing that I could ask for. So MJ, I don't know where you're at in your steps, but, um, Anything else? There you go. There it is.
And keep up the great work, Erwin and Tracy. Will do. Thank you. You too, Jimmy. Hey, MJ, what, which, who's the artist that you're listening to? Is uh, I think it's Steve Aoki, if I'm not mistaken. So, 